being down slightly for this team at the moment, but obviously they're after the big games. And it does feel like maybe Inters is the one that you can point towards in some of these bigger games on LAN against, you know, the, the scarier squads and whatnot where they are uh, or where he rather is really struggling. So definitely want to keep his... Uh, eyes on but yeah it's it's tough it is very very tough here um i'll scoot over the veto quickly we are straight into the game we've obviously got dust two here ancient picked up by heroic and then mirage remaining lots of chatter about heroic maybe in between games as of course the action has gotten kicked off here trav yeah let's get into it should be a fun qualifier, and uh, we got a great game to kick us off, of course. Dust 2, one of the maps that Cloud9, that I've been watching them on lately, have been looking quite good on, and I'm quite impressed. A nice little setup for Heroic on the pistol, though, and of course, we've been talking so much about Cloud9, maybe we'll have to talk about Heroic a bit more in an eco round, because we've kind of uh, bypassed them slightly, game getting underway, thankfully, in good time between these two, and uh, Axile looking to try and answer back as... Already Cloud9 are in a three versus four. Just a slow creep here downstairs. Oh, I, I like the idea of them going down. Giving a bit of presence away. They will bolster up that B bomb site now and, and get themselves prepared over here. Just trying to starve that information away on the Cloud9 side of things. The P250 is, is the main one to watch. Maybe in the hands of Exile it could do some damage with that armor, but Heavy God seems confident in it. This is an interesting kind of angle from Tessus. Not sure that it's one that would work in a rifle round, but maybe in the pistol. Yeah, they go straight into his crosshair. He's just not quite on it, unfortunately. Axile takes him down, knows all about that Molotov forces shoe shout. Beautiful little move here in the three versus two directly, right? They don't lose anyone there. Bomb plant comes in, and now a retake for Heroic. Switch around very quickly. Dexter needs this immediate headshot, and he had his opportunity to be fair, even though he probably should have been killed a lot quicker there, Dexter. Now it's down to Kixan, the leader of Heroic. Man, that's uh, come into question a little bit lately for, of course, Heroic's recent form. Now he's been spotted out. They're just going to go for a triple swing. And Heavy God and Axile, the two men I spoke about uh, on that rifling core of Cloud9, will kick it off with the pistols. Yeah, really good to see them activated, right? I think uh, having a good start to a game does affect you as a player. I think we're all familiar with that across our levels of competition, wherever they may yeah. be. So we'll see here if uh, those two boys can indeed use the energy positively. It's going to be the force buyout from Heroic. Now, our good friend, Naokai, he's not here at the moment, but he has been keeping track. And as far as I'm aware, the Force Buys are generally not doing too well. But what the hell has happened here? We've got so many MP9s in play. Uh, really quite interesting in terms of where the buy from Heroic has ended up. So this might be something that they have worked on. And indeed, it could be effective. It's um, something that we have seen come through quite a lot. Just going for those MP9s, you know how powerful they can be. And a scout on Dust2, the map for it, without a doubt. Can I don't have control toward the bottom of mid here, though, next to the mid doors, of course. Nurse is going to be able to hear all of this while playing off of his teammate's contact. But I do like the setup, like you say, with Tessez and Kixan together like this. Tessez playing anti. Now it's closed doors. Should you think he's getting himself one kill, but actually it's none. Yeah, it has to be trades from Heroic. There will be for now, though. And in comes the scout of Dexter. They get flanked by that MP9 push from Short as well. That leaves it all down to Inter. E8 got that bomb. And Dexter's going to dome him as well. Immediate rebuttal from Heroic. Really solid stuff. And there you go. The Force Spy does indeed find success. I think that's maybe where you have to come at it, though, as we touched on at the start of the round. An idea needs to be behind the force. You know, you see a lot of teams, they're like, yeah, we force in. Yeah, cool. I'll just grab a deagle, swing mid, try and bang someone. And, and then it doesn't work out for them. 5v4 immediately. But heroics seem to have a setup, seem to have a support system, even in the force bite. I do like the idea on the force. Maybe try and go for more firepower rather than utility and it works really well for them it works really really well and now we'll see cloud nine of course go in for the force but this is not really their choice they have to do this yeah the uh meta dictating the um force by wars right 
And that's count number one on missed utility so far today. That incendiary bouncing off the top of the uh, yes. mid doors there. The jump mm. throws have been a big source of conversation. And in multiple games I've had a chance to watch and cast, there have been a hell of a lot of missed flashes, jump throws, people throwing Molotovs into the ground purely because they're re reverting to their muscle memory of the jump throw key, which just doesn't exist anymore, of course. Yeah, I also, I love the idea that pros are just sort of so ingrained or whatever, where it's like, if it's not a massive patch, they're not really that bothered. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, oh, they've downloaded like 30 megabytes. You know, they've just been <laughs> practicing. They've been on their own prac servers probably, right? Where it's like they can still uh, maybe get a jump throw grind going. I guess maybe not because it's like just fully deleted now. I'm not sure. Is it just on the VAC servers that they're banned or have they just... There's multiple inputs, you just get kicked. Yeah, okay. Uh, so fair enough, you can't do it anywhere. It. They're matching yeah, it yeah. everywhere, yeah. So. Fair enough, fair enough. But still, I love the idea that there might be one or two pros out there like, why is my jump throw bind not working? <laughs> 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 just, like, they've not, they've not fully read notice. into the patch notes. Yeah, <laughs> quite funny. Ooh. Nice shot, Axel, though. And again, of course, forced by wards. What did I say about them? Sometimes yes. these sort of games can start this way in a bit of a weird and wacky manner. And Nurse and Tess says, even though Nurse is already here, he's going to have to pounce pretty quickly. There's a kit on the floor directly in front of Nurse there. He's going to need that, but he needs himself to be alive as well. Icy, I think, shoots a dead body, but it doesn't matter because it serves as that with Tess says in the end anyway. And a couple of guns will be retrieved as well. I couldn't get the second M4 picked up, but only the MP9 and the AK recovered. But Cloud9's Deagles work out beautifully. Okay. We're in for one, aren't we? We are certainly in for one. Now we got Dexter out with the M4. You know, this is this is a total mess. This is a complete mess. This is just two gaming through and through. I'll tell you that much for free. Beautiful stuff, though, from Cloud9. Showing some of their individuality, which at one time was what this team in spirit was all about. So we'll see if they can continue that Axile. Nice one in the previous. Icy getting himself onto the board. All very scary prospects. Big man Nerds as yet to frag. Honorary Brit, of course, coming from the endpoint ranks. Either way. Adage out towards long here. Pretty passive hold from the CT side. Just give them the control. You're going to need to keep looking for information, of course, our heroic. These sort of rounds, you can't really sit back and wait. Of course, uh, Eric of right, run of form lately has really not been that great. We had one win in the recent Blast events, of course. Fail failed to make it to the main event in Cologne. Didn't make it through the play-in. Uh, of course, losing 2-0 to OG, to the OG today as well is really something you don't want to see from them. Even though OG are looking better with Krizen, you can't really... So it's a result that's good for Rowan in any stretch of the imagination. And, uh, they're doing really good work on this particular round. They've hit their shots, as you'd expect. Every god looking good once again. And uh, this is going to consign Heroic to a bit of a rough start to this one because they're going to have to probably play some play for some exits or maybe try and do some extra damage. They're not going to be winning this round and... It will mean that whatever happens in the next one, Cloud9 have pretty much an eco to go up against. Yes, it is a nice look here for C9. They have put an end to the Force by Wars. Potentially, again, it can still be a bit funky. We've got a Deagle that Shoes can drop and an AK, of course, in his hands in the primary slot. So, always potential. Never writing it off until it is over, sir. So, we'll see. Whether Cloud9 can make it through the next. But the, the main eye of the storm, I think, is indeed all good for Cloud9 at the moment. Yeah, and uh, the main thing, as I said, about this Cloud9 team is maybe relying on the firepower. But at the same time, for the roster to be looking as workable as it is when it's been basically a complete revamp so early doors it can only be classed as promising signs i'd say taking it through to the rmr as they did as well is uh certainly promising as i said they get absolutely destroyed by nine pandas and the other two maps were 13 11 13 11 but that was the game to uh get them through in a 3-0 fashion so there's a good amount to work with for this roster people as i said will have their question marks over it 
especially Inters, just in general, they might think this Cloud9 won't be really a team that can really challenge for top tier events. But well, they have the players. There's obviously something that had to happen you know, to, to pluck Inters back up, where they've said, okay, we, we need this guy back. Yeah. You know, for, for a while, he felt like he was the problem. They got rid of him, and then, you know, the whole Maffini debacle and everything. And they, they did pluck Inters back from the depths right and it's like okay someone in this team maybe axile has been like this was my guy and you know i didn't stand up for him enough when uh they wanted to get rid of him who who knows who knows right it's a really interesting kind of conversation maybe boomich has played with him a fair bit and, and likes what he sees so it is interesting but we'll keep our eyes on players like that oh my goodness keep your eyes on these usps oh god it's a bit problematic she's still alive with the ak still needs a hero moment can't do it though. He's trying to just battle for space. Unfortunately, no kills come around for him, and I think they are showing pretty decent respect. That it's like, yeah, he's got that AK. Don't give him the headies. Get the bomb in there cleanly. And indeed, they go for that. So it forces a save out. I think in terms of a half by, you can be happy with that on the heroic end. Unfortunately, no victory for them. So it will be that four-one for Cloud Nine, despite losing out the force bike, right? Really good yeah. recovery from them. You have to bear in mind here. And it's, um... Sometimes it can actually work out worse for the, for the team that wins the force bike. If you then lose the immediate force bike following, especially on the CT side with the economy being so brutal, it's just going to be a while before they can really get everything they possibly want. I think they're going to be able to have fallen up in this re next round, but still... You don't get that orp out so early on. I say you've fallen off, but Kickstand wouldn't be on March. They might just go for rifles on this round looking at it now. We'll have to see. Um, but yeah, I think not getting an orp out early on CT on Dust 2 is often a very, very big problem. And it can lead to, well, I say this map looking pretty T-sided. I feel like the entirety of Counter-Strike is pretty T-sided right now with how the stats are looking and the recent big events. But yeah, it's, it puts Cloud9 in a very good position, I think. Yep, fantastic start if they can continue solidifying their spot. Oh, don't do it, Tessus. Even that is risky on the cross. He might have <laughs> eaten a bullet. I see is strained in, just really waiting. Couple chances, but of course, how is he to know? Too much quick up short here. Got a bit of support behind him as well in the form of Heavy God. So let's see what the gruesome twosome can get done. Nade rings round. Doesn't actually find the frag. So he's not quite deep enough. He was... Getting the hell out of there. Nerds gets caught with some KZ in the middle of an official. <laughs> and Inters will indeed drop him. So Nerds not having the best game. And that is a really bad way to die as well. You know what I mean? Just jumping up slowly, trying to make a play, trying to get a good position. And you just get caught with your pants down for your fifth death of the game. Yeah, important kill from Inters. Popping up with those important kills in the in gun rounds. It's all Clan 19 from him, and now Shush needs to deliver. Boom, which looks like he wants to check the angle, but Gumbel spot him, bomb down, and it's an absolute destruction. Shush takes them all down, and Cloud 9's plans are ruined. Just like that. Axile has managed to, yeah, land a. Oh, bang, if only Icy was in slightly earlier. It's that bomb that needs recovering, right? That's the key thing here. 25 seconds to do that. And again, full respect. We've got the bomb. We've got utility remaining. And he's like, yeah, not a chance. So save will come round. Recover some utility. And uh, they do kind of need him. Okay. What was that all about then? Why has why he just run back, picked up an M4 and got his ult back? I'm not quite sure what that was about. <laughs> but there you, there you go, mate. Whatever. Uh, all good. Maybe just a little scared if someone came near him. Automatic weapon might have been nicer. Yeah. But as I was saying, before that kind of wackiness, they do need him to survive here with uh, all that cash because he can drop. So really, really important that he lives. Yeah, good round from Heroic though in the end. And uh, I say good round from Heroic. Good round from Shush, to be fair. He was the main man. If he gets one and dies there, then the round's pretty much over. But he purely wins the round all by himself. He'll miss the little drop down in towards Suicide there, which is a bit awkward for IC. Interesting that you can't go for the pick on the doors straight away. Yeah, it's important to praise Shush for that one because I feel like he's been one of those players that is perform been performing a little bit under par uh, lately. Of course, 
He was has been known in the past as one of the best anchors in the world, but Tessas has been improving a little bit in the last few months. Nertz is still pretty solid. Questions are asked of you know Degster and his, all his visa issues and Kickstand's leadership and now Shush as well with how poor their results have been. So important for the individuals to gain confidence with winning rounds kind of by themselves like that. But already in the following round, Tessas has been domed by Axile. And just keep an, Axile, keep an eye on Axile for the duration of this entire series and this entire qualifier because he is really having a resurgence of form in more favorable roles once again. Inters a bit trapped. Nurt's not fancying the fight. Again, maybe he does check out, unfortunately, for him. Oh, Dagster. <laughs> oh, though he's too <laughs> lined up, man. If that smoke kind of diffusion worked in his favor, he may well have caught the edge of them. Not going to be the case. And it might just be a flat save, to be honest. The A bomb site is a bit more retakeable, but he's so far away. Absolutely no pressure on this A site right now. Nurt's going to get timed on. Oh. Man. Oh. He cannot catch a break, this guy. <laughs> That's a shame, isn't it? Because obviously we saw him having that duel up against Inters and Tunnels a little bit earlier on, and then eventually just gets parved out of the round, does Nerds. Inters, as I said, sometimes he can be guilty of being a bit too defensive, but often those plays in rounds like this do work out for him and once again more impact from Axile and Inters. The old Gambit youngsters duo. It's kind of nice to see them back together once again. I've always said to myself in my in my heart of hearts, if I was going to think of my heart for Counter-Strike, if Shiro wins some events, then why can't Axile? They should be both being successful together. I can only hope that this Cloud9 roster gives Axile some more success again. Yeah, man. It, it really does, I think... They do have a bit of a place in our heart, you know, as, as yeah. the tier two blokes. Um, there on the grinders come up. from back in the day. Yeah, man. Oh my goodness. What was it like? Thirty-three bo3s in a row, or something? something or thirty-three. Wild. I think that's maybe how many bo3s they won. Is the stat I have in my head, and yeah. I think the Vertigo was like undefeated for like forty-five yeah. maps or something absolutely insane. They famously... really farmed tier two. And famously, Shiro had like a ridiculous rating as well on Vertigo. Like, I think he went negative like what, like five times in a hundred maps. Like, it yeah. was that ridiculous. So, yeah. Unreal. That I always remember. Yeah, they were the gamers. It was a different time. Three BO3s a day, you know, nowhere else to go because we were all locked indoors. And indeed, the, the land transition, not quite as hard for Gambit into players into cloud nine yeah it is couple available for him that's clean he will get traded out but he's grabbed some info maybe an extra couple there if he heard uh would it be here shush take a step either way the b-bomb site vulnerable they are savvy to that one shush not wasting any time but not aware of how deep they could be so he gives his life away at the chance of saving the round unfortunately he gives it as he dies. Yeah, another well thought out round from Cloud9. You know, I mean, maybe I'm doing them a slight disservice to be fair. I mean, I've actually watched quite a lot of this roster since it's uh, since it got put together, of course, in all the open qualifiers and closed qualifiers. They've had to play, of course, without having the uh, automatic invites and. Um, I kind of said they rely on the firepower of, you know, Heavy God Axile Icy. But I've got to give Boomich some credit in terms of his fragging ability as well. I think he's genuinely been a really good, um, had really good numbers as the in-game leader. And I think his leadership in general has been quite good. They will have some odd results, of course. I mean, I think the Dacia Belgrade qualifiers where they lost to Johnny Speeds, for example, is one of those which is just uh, unexplainable and almost unforgivable. But... Counter-Strike is just so close these days that those results will just happen. And despite how well you think you're playing going into it, they can happen. So, give a roster more time. Uh, it was only the very early doors of this Cloud9. And uh, obviously, time does run out. But at the moment, the progression, especially as their first ever game, I think, together, did, they did, did look pretty good. I think it was in a Blast event, right? They looked pretty good. Um, just got to give it some time to marinate with this new five and boom which seems to be calling pretty well ok 
Okay, back into proceedings here. It's going to have to be a big one from Heroic. They are struggling. It is the pick of Cloud9, for sure. But all the same, you know, we're moving into a, a relatively puggy uh, map as well in the form of Ancient. So this is just one of those ones. Heroic maybe not got too many reps on this map at the moment. Still uh, working it out. Um, and indeed, it's been a good while since they played it, in fact. So, yeah, the dust too. They've been trying to avoid it. And maybe there is a reason as to why. They'll be confident in their ancient, though, of course. But, yeah, you, you still have to give us a bit of something here, Trav. And a serviceable CT side. Maybe what they're all about on this map. Yeah, you'd be right, Heroic. Just don't have much to talk about on this map at all yet. Obviously, lots of teams are, have been kind of forced to play Dust 2, whether they wanted to or not, because if, if some teams hate the new Vertigo, then the only other choice is Dust 2, really. As, uh, there's one to play and not Permaban. And, of course, they played Vitality at Dallas. And then finally, they obviously played in Compass as well against Ents. They won that one, but... Need more good plays like that from Tessers, and it's only one this time. Like click smoke on the corner for Inters to give himself some space to Molly Car. There are two Mollies. Well, Axel is going to force his way forward just as that Molotov is thrown. And actually, that's a really good call. Surprises uh, Heroic and surprises Kicksan that Axel comes through with it on that timing. But Nurse is going to be here. They're waiting to throw these smokes for the cross. He has a chance to peek ahead of it. Doesn't cover it all. It's not a great smoke. And, of course, the nade will blow it open as well. But Nurse doesn't take his timing. And I think maybe he could have gone for a kill. And Inters takes him down. Jesus. Dexter did it all by himself. Gets one more. Seven seconds for the plant, by the way. It's just about going to come through. And now it's a 2v2. This is all over the place right now. We'll recircle back to just how messy that cross was for both teams. Shush, meanwhile, on the flank here. Being held for... Easily finished. Maybe a bit too fast. Dexter is out. Something's gone wrong there, Trav. Is it just me? Like, Nurse is making a play. Then someone needs the smoke and absolutely screws him, you know, to be honest. Because he was ready to go round. Big gap in the smoke. It's a bit of a mess. I think they knew there was a big gap. So they take a freeze and Nurse was ready to go. He could have come away while they're all lined up with something pretty substantial. But Nade goes in. Then it gets naded again, and I don't know what Nertz was doing, whether he's reloading or something, but it was open for him to take a fight, and he just gets caught immediately, right? The the blow of the smoke benefited the T-side more than the CT side. And then the flashes, right? The flashes, yeah. I'm pretty sure, were T-sided, but all the same, just all over for Heroic. When it felt like Cloud9 were on a bit of a mare, to be honest. The really bad smoke that absolutely froze their game, and they were like, oh, we can't move off this smoke we're gonna have to make a decision here the onus was on heroic and it was just a mess and you see it now timeout comes in there was clearly something going sideways com wise there i think sideways com wise would be the right thing to say because obviously you know we have the x-ray they don't goes without saying we were just you know urging nurse to go for a swing because he probably has a 3k spray down at least two with how they were positioned on the corner of long wall there uh cloud nine but as you say, the nade coming through seemed like he almost didn't want it at that timing. Never went for an actual swing at any point. Just gives Inters the initiative to be the one swinging into the fight rather than the other way around. Which still tends to be slightly advantageous in this game. So yeah, uh, poor from Heroic. And Cloud9 take advantage. As we say, this is a map that Cloud9 have been very willing to go toward in this edition of the roster. They uh, not been entirely successful, but they have found some wins on it. Of course, this is one of the get one of the maps where they did lose one to Johnny Speeds. But um, yeah, uh, things could turn around an ancient because, as we discussed a little bit earlier, Heroic are a lot more comfortable there, and Cloud Nine. I've seen some very uh, shaky maps from them on Ancient thus far. So this is might be one of those maps in the series for C9 that's a must win. It's possible. It is very possible. And just absolutely pummel it home would be fantastic for them. Oh, Tessus kicks off well. Got some support as well, the flashes. A little shaky here from the T side, just drawing them in, trying to play around with the orb. In comes his flash, that's work, but he does get another. 
Really, really nice start. We're going back for the default nades here. Kicks on meanwhile in behind. Gonna, oh, catch the player off ah. eventually. Icy just <laughs> had no idea what was going on, you know. Really not considering him at all. That's the bomb dropped. Surely has to be a winnable situation now for Heroic. Twenty-four seconds. There's just no time for this for C9 unless they just dive through mid doors and go toward uh, B or go straight up cat to A. I just don't see a world in which they can turn this. They actually have a path. They have somewhat of a path. Hang on a second. Twelve seconds to get up short and plant the bomb. They're still kind of fumbling with utility. I don't think Intense is going to get there in time. Surely not. Surely not. No. Cloud9, you have made a massive mistake here. Intense will go straight down. Heavy God is stuck behind the smoke, and I think they know it too. Will he go down after time? He won't. Cloud9 are lucky. They have completely misread the clock there. And I kind of thought that was going to be the case when they were top mid, let alone on short itself. Wild. Absolutely wild, sir. I mean, yeah. again, both teams, I think, really having these teething issues, it feels like. Comms, messy. Whether it is the map of Dust2, it can flow quite fast. Or whether it is just where these teams are at. That is a heck of a grunting noise. <laughs> but my guy has got the jump throw nailed. So that's yep. good. Well done. Maybe you, hear, maybe you hear the grunt, you know that's a good sign. Yep. <laughs> it is, I mean, it's something that's going to come in, right? Because I don't think yep. it had it on the uh, jump throw binds. Because it's a different, sort of a different tech. Correct. Yeah. So there you go. The grunts are back. And now audible by third person as well, of course, which is important to mention. Obviously, important to, important, important to say that if you are jump throwing and you are making the grunt sound, you're still going to be landing on the ground anyway. So you'd be making a, an audible sound cue either way. But still, it's uh, yeah, important to mention. Anyway, Cloud9 up cat uh, in the next round, the penultimate round of the first half. Nice, he's got his all-pin play. They've got decent utility, Cloud9. Um, but they are going to use quite a lot of it to try and get their edge control short. And actually, it's just going to be Boomich launching his way down towards CT. He sees it's clear. That sold quite a bit of a fake toward the A side of the map. But there are still two toward B. He's going to have to get past. But Boomich just being here is going to remove his counterpart kick down. And now it's going to be all on Nerds. Or two from the headshot angle. Perfectly done. Got Shush in support. Now it's all going to be Boomich and Icy. There is a path. But there's not much time again. Oh, Tessus has given up his life to IC. Oh dear. Once again, there could be a way back in. Yeah, brilliant rounding from Nurts. A fantastic setup on B to make it happen. You know, it all falls into place over there for them. Next uh, aggressive. Drops the bomb. 10 seconds in the molly. No, so you can maybe just buy the time here, but does eventually go down to Icy's. Oh, that's close, but it's enough. And now Shush coming round. May well have been heard or at least guessed about just because he is that B player. He's incredibly low. That information maybe not going to be there. And Icy starting to second guess himself. Got to be careful here. Shot rings off for the oh. head. Shot lands. Pinned to the back wall as Cloud9 nick that one away. And it's not just Icy's individual ability with the AWP that's notable, of course, that we saw from his time on Amcal, even maybe from his short time on Avangar as well back in the day. It's the fact that he's a very, very good clutcher. I have seen many, many clutches of, of his, whether it's a pistol or, or a rifle. And sure, he has a massive advantage up against Shush there, but he did go for the AWP. It's not like he just went for the pistol and ran him down looking to try and hit one bullet. He uh, hits the AWP shots and completes it for his team. And after the couple of mistakes that Cloud9 have made in this half, still 8-3 looking for 9-3. And Boomich going for the spawn-based pick with the AWP out long. Cloud9 are looking very solid right now. Well, he is an AWPer, technically speaking. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> He's got a history, though. Either way. So was Perfecto for a bit. Well, yeah, well, there was. you go, mate. There you go. I mean, every, anyone, <laughs> anyone can do it. You know, AWPs OP. You just have to click on them. It's not even on the head. You know what I mean? It's like on the bigger part of the body. Easy for you so. to say. Well, indeed, it is. It is, yeah. <laughs> 1500 elo it's a lot easier than it looks <laughs> uh, either way there has been a trade back here so we shall see whether heroic can recover things a little brave from them as well as nerds goes pushing through b main so there you are. this could get a little feisty okay molotov forces them back 
Cloud9 massively grouped tough. If only Nerds had kept going, he really could have caught them all off guard here. Oh, Dexter, if he moves forward here, surely he's done for. Absolutely is. No chance to even pull out the AWP again. Boomich takes it. And look at the positioning of Heroic now in this round. You've got Shushu had pushed all the way around, as you can see. But he's not going to have much say in this, because Cloud9 have all the sights themselves. And Heavy God just takes a heads-up duel toward Tunnel anyway. Easy peasy for Cloud9. And Nerts with the recovered AWP. And Tess is on an M4. No kit, just an incendiary. Icy can afford to dance around in mid. And there's nothing for Heroic to work with. Icy finishes off the half. Nine for Cloud9. Welcome back, gamers. We are into the second half of our first map. Cloud9 flattening Heroic at the moment, I think it is safe to say. Maybe not the uh, greatest map for Heroic, as we've mentioned. One that they have fancied staying away from. They've been lucky up until now, right? Cloud9, a fresher mm -hmm. team, an individually based team. I think they will make us to a big part of their repertoire of their utility belt. We shall see. Nerds on the contact. The triple swing coming in from the CT side, though. That's a pretty scary prospect. They will lose one in the meanwhile. Lovely little exit flash there. Allows them to get away. I'm not sure. It's tough to say who's come out on top of that exchange. Cloud9 have been able to find space across the map, though. They've got the intel toward long. They've got inters pushing through tunnel. There is a smoke up for that cross for Heroic. And Axel's just waiting near uh, Gandalf right now. Just biding his time, playing off of Boomich's contact. 
Do my mind setup isn't that bad, but pistols do turn very quickly, especially the fact that Shush has still got utility. That Molotov will force Axel into the open. He just gets burnt out in the end. I think it's actually just going to be the pure utility that might win her this pistol round. Heavy God had to find one more, but Nerts clean with the P250. And Heroic have parred this pistol quite nicely. Inters will probably look to try and save his Kevlar, I'd imagine. Yeah, why not? Why not? They will potentially look for a force bite in the next, I think, especially when you're this far ahead. There is more of an argument for it than against it. But Heroic absolutely needed that one, of course. They dropped the pistol, and God forbid they don't find a bomb plant. You know, if that was the uh, universe, the timeline in which we were on, I think they would have probably dropped the map quite swiftly. So this gives them a bit of a chance. Still going to be tough. Still a long road. But it is all about just proving to yourself that you can match off against Cloud9, right? When we've got Heavy God, Axile, Icy. Well, I mean, all of them, to be fair. But everyone yeah. looking pretty damn good here on that Cloud9 side. That's probably a bit scarier than just having one individual popping off, actually. I think having the whole team look impenetrable is a really worrisome sign for the next map so you have to start proving to yourself that you can battle back meanwhile on the heroic side dexter looks good beyond that not much yeah, had a couple of individual moments right shush went around all by himself on the ct side for heroic but, uh, the one plus point for cloud nine as well as we say sort of you know if i can together as a team that's a very good sign for a new roster but now there's a chance here for Heroic, and these games can turn very, very quickly. It was a 9-3 half, Pistol immediately turns into 9-5 with the full eco. Of course, Icy, he's considering a glass cannon orp right now. Let's see if he goes for it. Go on, mate, you know you want to. Okay, rifle instead. So, mm. no orp and the first gun round for Cloud9. And Heroic, with the Mac 10 on, on Tessa, wouldn't be surprised if they try and keep, the, keep it pacey. Knowing that there's definitely a world they can get back into this game now. So I think Icy would have probably gone for it if he had a better spawn. He was right mm. at the back of CT spawn. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, if he was a bit further forwards, you've got mid, you've got long, of course. Nerds may well have been heard there. Still not ready, though. Boomich gets wow. caught. That's kind of a uh, blunder that it's like, okay, we've not got anyone covering mid. Panic to cover mid. I'm sure he must have been heard by these short players. Nerds on the entries with the Galil, making it look uh, a little more expensive than 1800. Really solid stuff from him. That is one of the flashes of all time. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Nearly three for Icy. They got nades out a bit early. That could have pulled the round back, but he's traded in good time. Might just be the save now. Yeah. How T-sided Counter-Strike is. Icy would have needed to get three to even give his teammates a slight chance. Heavy God. I guess the one thing that is worrying here for uh, Heroic is they had no smoke on the cross, but they also don't need to cross because Dexter's the one with the bomb anyway. So they can just choose not to face. And I think they'll realize that Cloud9 will not be going for this from here. So 9 3 becomes 9 6. We, we were kind of discussing quite a lot about the history of both these two teams and the players, of course, and their recent results in the first half. Kind of just seeing how comfortable it was was really in that first half for Cloud9. They were outmaneuvering Heroic. They were outdueling Heroic. It's basically as simple as that. Sometimes it can be as simple as that um, on Dust2. And now, you might be seeing a little bit of the same the other way. Heroic having a great start to the second half. It's going to force Cloud9 to be a bit all over the place in terms of their money. Good parving from Cassez to go back and pick up the M4 from Short. So he upgrades from his Mac 10 Good decisions being made at the moment, and Cloud9 will start to feel it a little bit as we get ever further into the CT side. Yeah, really solid look from Nurse as well. He was a player that we were maybe worried about for a period, but he has managed to turn it around. He's one and six, right? Pretty sure. So, indeed, we'll bounce back. A little presence out towards long there, Trav. Nothing much happening off the back of it. Still not an awful lot from Cloud9, right? They don't want to give those early kills away, and they're looking to just sort of cheese their way into the round with a heavy A stack here, pretty close up middle, right? You can really support in. 
Exile does want to try and get into the mixture. It's all a distractionary play, though. They were hoping to potentially catch off. That is clean. They are unarmored, but they're both in the noggin, mate. So really, really good stuff from Nerds. I think it'll just be a save for the rifles once again. Yeah, lovely spray transfer from Nerds. As you say, would have been... Uh... Comfortable, even if they did have guns, it looks like. He'll drop down towards CT. Inters is still here. Of course, he and Heavy God and then the whole team uh, are buying next run anyway. So they can perhaps afford to play some form of aggressive exits here. Try and limit the heroic money at least a little bit. Because right now it could get built up pretty significantly. Axel gives it a go. Inters obviously hears and running off towards short. With that new box, of course. No, it's going to just go straight back up again. Has uh, provided a lot of uh, a lot of extra factors to retakes and holds on the CT side. That box being added on Dust2. Actually, um, from Dust2, in addition that they're making it quite enjoyable, actually. Dust2 was one of my least favourite maps to watch comp uh, for a long time in its previous iterations. But on CS2, with the nades being able to break the smokes and everything, I think Dust2 has been quite enjoyable to watch, actually. But right now, not for Cloud9 CT side. Alrighty, let's get it going, man. Cloud9 going to have to give us something. It's been really, really lackluster. Heroic are starting to heat up, ultimately. Long presence is late from Heroic. Go on, Boomage wow. for the double spray down. An interesting choice, Heroic, rather than rushing out, rather than going off the spawn base. They try and burst through, but Cloud9 putting so many resources in towards Long, it really pays off for them as well. Yeah, I love that from Cloud9 and from Boomich. Spray down with the A4. Not easy, but he made it look it. I see, of course, with his orp out now. And that residual cash that, of course, Inters and Heavy God will have if they're able to win this round comfortably. It only makes them look a little bit more comfortable again. That run boost for Kickson and Tessez does not work out too well. Lurk smoke on cat bow. Nate will be coming in. Axel's also got a Molotov to keep them at bay. 50 seconds left in this round. A little smoke that ramp on it. Anyway, but Dexter out long. Oh, he needed that one. But Boomich once again stands tall. Boost into the top. May find one, but it won't even find that one. Axile just about takes Kixan. And Tessez is surrounded. Yeah, no way he makes it out of here. Not without a fight anyway, and not without a pretty good one. <laughs> yeah, deleted. So there you go. Double digits for Cloud9. This is what the solid 9-3 half. It's a big old benefit when you start things a bit slow. Still plenty of money for Heroic. They could potentially come back quite nicely, and if they can get a, you know, solid sort of round here themselves, that would be... Really good, but in the same vein, lots and lots of money for Cloud9, thanks to saves and thanks to how clean that previous one was. So it is a, a topsy-turvy kind of time. Heroic just going to have to hit a solid line of consistency here. Yeah, and that's been their biggest issue in basically every tournament they've played in recent times. Results have just not been... Oh, I say consistency. <laughs> they've been consistency, consistently mid for the last few tournaments, it's fair to say. Unfortunately for them. There are some bright sparks that often light up series for them. Let's see how they do in the following gun round. Because Icy wants to go peeking back in toward mid. No, it's on the angle, but Icy just better. Incendiary will maybe separate them slightly and actually has. Kicks and decides to fall away in the end. And of course, that'll take him down to 58 HP. Incendiary is kind of sucking this game right now, but... Let's take oh, just under half of his health away. But Axel's looking at the smoke a little bit. I guess you could say wrongly. And Shush takes both him and Boomich. Round turned on its head. That is huge. Really nasty play out from Shush, man. Knows that smoke. Knows that there is maybe a bit of a gap with the way the uh, volumetric dynamicism works. Creeping out on towards B here as well. Shush going to be found, but it confirms the fact that B is potentially clear. So they'll start to pick up the pace. Big fight coming in here. Heavy God's got a nade available. That oh, does a lot of damage. He kicks and he's the man with the bomb. Oh. He's got to make it across. I see with the protection shot. 
Where the hell was he, to be honest? Like, he's dipped into the night like a phantom straight in towards Tunnel. 3v2 is definitely doable. They're all going to group up and try and move in together. They've got kits, all of them. A couple flashes, but I think they will forego those just to try and make it in towards the site quietly. And you can see not really being considered at all. They are waiting quite a while before making the move in. Flash comes round. Wow. Four in the back is Dexter. Didn't quite know what was up. Kicks and falls. Kit available and a bit too easy for Cloud9 in the 3v2. Yeah, some mistakes made there by Heroic. I, I don't, I didn't necessarily see the need for Tessas to go peeking in toward window as he did on that timing, getting removed by Icy. I feel like if you have three on the site, sure he wanted to pounce on the, on that timing, maybe realizing that they weren't looking toward him at that moment. But in a three v three, you'd favor Heroic. Cloud Nine, though, I've got to give them uh, props for the decision they made to go three through tunnel. Now, how hard it is to retake the site when there are players holding the door and the window. It's just not favored for a CT side at any point. So Cloud9 decide to go all three through tunnels. You need that tunnel's presence for at least one player to make retakes a possibility, it feels like. And in the end, they choose all three. The fact they all three have kits as well makes it a lot more comfortable in terms of how much they need to rush. And as you saw, they caught Dexter in transition just when he was looking outside of window and outside of doors to see exactly what Cloud9 were planning. And uh, he couldn't get himself into a safer position quick enough. Dexter's internal clock didn't tick fast enough. It's one of those maybe unsure, right? You have to put yourself into a dangerous position to get away from the danger. All three in from tunnels is certainly rare. Oh, oh Dexter no. with the miss. Not looking good. He's had a good game as well. 16 frags. Puts him at the top of the scoreboard for either end. Down goes Shush as well to the nade. So, yeah, from bad to worse hit for Heroic. And it might just be Curtain sooner than they expected. Axel fancies himself a bit of an orb. They can all do it on Cloud9. They can all do it. And indeed, <laughs> securing the round with that frag, I feel. Should be 12 now. Yeah, nice little recovery from Cloud9. I thought Heroic maybe had something to speak about on this T side. But with some nice ideas, some nice individual level, some nice spray downs by Boomich, and some good moments from the likes of Icy and Axile. We are creeping toward the, these map points here. Of course, winner of this plays the winner of Bait and Eternal Fire. It's currently going down right now on the D stream, I do believe. Uh, I can give you an update on some of the games going on, of course. Elsewhere in this qualifier, Bait had been owned by Eternal Fire in map one. It's already over 13-2. Um, Fnatic are 9-7 up on 3D Max and Falcons are 11-9 up on OG. Boomich once again showing up. That's his 14th kill of the game. Co top fragging alongside Icy on his team. Dexter in the entire server, but that's not doing much for right, right now. Nurt needs to find a long range spray down just to keep himself alive, and I don't think that's going to happen. 18 seconds, flashing in the top of long doors. He is a dead man, and Boomich gets a triple. Lovely stuff all round here as Boomich tops the numbers for Cloud9. Maybe not what you expected to see here this afternoon, but it is always a treat. And of course, Boomich, he's a new man, or rather half a man, I suppose. <laughs> Indeed, he looks great. And uh, I'm allowed to say that. I'm allowed to say that as a fellow um, man. Proportions. Yeah, sure. There you go. Thank you, Brad. <laughs> Thank you. That's a good way of putting it and not offending uh, anyone in the community. <laughs> Either way, Boomich going to continue fragging out here. Doesn't matter what he looks like. But, you know, healthy body, healthy mind, man. I think it really could make a difference to his game. We'll see. Yeah, but I almost feel proud of him, right? It's kind of crazy. Oh, Axile. Gonna feel proud of that shot as well. Mertz is making his way down mid. And even though he's half blind, Axile saw him a split second before he goes for the kill and just deletes him. And all Heroic have to show for this final round to save the game. There's Dexter on a scout. Kicks on an AK. Shush on an eagle. Only a flash and a nade. And they're going to have to win this via killing. Indeed. Big frags required. Heavy God. Good position. Oh, oh my goodness. Just crept past. And he's a little bit like, like, did I see a guy? What's going on? You know, he's really had a little bit of... Mandela moment 
here. Caught off by the Deagle, so it doesn't really matter in the end. Trade out of information. Now, the big thing is, the bomb has crossed. The bomb is on the site, getting planted. So yeah. they're going to be like, what the hell? How have they planted? Where have they planted? For a second as well. And they're all a little bit low, so I don't like the look for Cloud9. I'm not going to lie. It's all on to Dexter, however. I'm trying to work around this smoke. And again, I think Cloud9 going to keep it simple, stupid. They will move together and just try and get this retake rolling. Orp out for Boomage. Get him traded. Dexter then. Smoke to his benefit. Spots out one. Going to go swinging in. Not quite ready for all of them. And he will indeed fall. Cloud9 netting it in. Takes him some time on that CT side. Let's not beat around the bush. But once they get going, looking pretty unstoppable. Heroic. Contextually, it doesn't look great. It maybe is a bit of a recovery, you could say, to be honest. It could have been very, very one-sided stuff. All the same, Cloud9 looking fantastic there as a squad. I will say, Dexter, numbers-wise, great. But the rest of the team just couldn't keep up. And the comms, man, there were some really messy rounds there from Heroic. Yeah, and I think that's one of the most worrying things. For the work onto Ancient here, right? And indeed, again... The entire squad was looking good. It wasn't maybe a case of, okay, this is really one-sided because Axile's popping off or Heavy God's taking over. The entire team, it was actually Boomich who ended up being... I shouldn't say that was such a surprise. It was actually Boomich that was towards the top end of the scoreboard, guys. And for me, I think that that guy should now be able to maybe start taking over and calling a good game here as well. They start on the CT side of things. It's dangerous. Get both pistols. Give us a, a couple of big clutches. And that might be enough to win you the match, you know? So, Heroic going to have to come out all guns blazing here and get themselves a really solid base to work with. Completely agree. And Kixan, he's certainly come out with utility blazing. He's the man with the entire belt dropped over to him. Molotov, smoke, and two flashes. And he's not using quite a lot of that in towards Red Room. But that's actually a lovely flick up from Axile Nurse. Tries to launch his way in, gets destroyed, but now Axar himself is down so very low, should not be long for this world. How has Dexter allowed Axar to get one more kill? And it's just completely fallen apart the scenes for Heroic. They had a plan. That plan is now not even a plan. Indeed, mate. Indeed. Slammed by the big man. Axar gonna get himself a three-piece, <laughs> in fact. And not a single death. So that's not good, mate. That is not good, right? We wanted a keen start here for Heroic. We wanted them to hit the ground running and to lose to a pistol like that. Look, the pistols, they are a bit random. They are a bit difficult to make work. But when you're in the server, it doesn't feel that way. Yeah. So it can be very, very difficult to apply that kind of punditry logic to these types of moments. Force by coming in. Nades and flashes round, but it's big old damage onto Heroic. No real return. Okay, Bombsite is vulnerable for a spell here, though. Inter's going to have to stand strong. Axile, of course, comes round to help. They couldn't quite find it. I think Axile's thrown a sort of slow down flash, and it worked really, really well. Means Inter's does not get overwhelmed, and they hold on to the site. Yeah, really nicely done by Inter's, especially there, making sure he swings as he puts his incendiary down, knowing that it's pretty likely a, a T player will be running through it. And that's something we might be seeing quite a lot more of in the future by a lot of players who are maybe playing those anchor roles and have just an incendiary to play with. Swinging with it, knowing that a player might push through it because those incendiaries are just smaller and kind of bad, full stop. Don't do much damage really to you at all. So Inters makes sure he gets ahead of the play. Sure, as we said, Heroic it is slightly a better map for them, a map they're more confident, confident on, a bit more comfortable on to at least go to and play. Um, but in the clone play-in, obviously, they played one of the games with Borrow 2K, as it has to be mentioned, uh, and not Degster. They won those both of those play-in games um, against MIBR and 3D Max, but, of course, in the long run, they didn't make it. So, it's worrying for them. And especially as a map of Ancient, of course, as well, that kind of no one but for maybe one or two teams permabands. It's one of the most important living ground maps in the pool right now. So if uh, you struggle on Ancient, your pool is uh, not looking too strong. Cloud9 are kind of in the same boat at the moment, uh, but they've started the better of the two thus far. Okie dokie. Really solid start indeed, sir. Should be an eco out for Heroic. 
I don't know. What, what do you make of this heroic team, man? I think on paper, there's really not loads in it for me. I like the look of Nerts for sure, but he's maybe not really found his feet on this squad in the same way that he did on Ents. Um, Shush and Tessis. Still there, still present, but again, not quite to the same sorts of levels. Maybe that yeah. is down to uh, getting acclimatized, but they've had a fair amount of time and it just hasn't looked great. Dexter's the big one where it's like, this is sort of his final chance, I think. Individually, always been a fantastic player for me. I just think like the personality is a lot to deal with on this guy, and it doesn't seem like there's much letting up either, you know? So I, I don't really know if he's going to be a good fit for this kind of team that is in interim, is building up. Is there a voice in here that's going to be able to just sort of calm Dexter down and tone him down or deal with him? I don't think so. It's tough, isn't it? I don't know. There's not really a piece of this heroic team right now that I look at and I say, yes, they can really, other than Nerds, they can really take a, a game by the scruff of the neck. I think Dexter has it in him, but I'm not sure he had it in him as much as he did, you know, toward the end of a, you know, maybe a couple of years ago or something. I, I really feel as though, um, don't get me wrong, heroic can still win this map and win the series. Like, we, we're talking as if it's all doom and gloom and it's completely over. It's absolutely not. But... I look at Nurts and I say, sometimes he needs some help. Tess has been performing a little bit better lately. I think that is a plus for Heroic. But Shush's numbers have been falling a little bit. Questions have come, of course, about Kickstand's leadership as well. Purely because you know, results aren't coming whatsoever. And sometimes even when the individuals perform well, it's just the leadership it doesn't come to, uh, come to some multiple issues. It can look problematic. And uh, Nurse will respond in this all-important opening gun round from her right, but he needs another. He's spotted Axel in Donut. Cladline go for a bit of a mid-pinch and get themselves a two-for-one. Just a big old freeze here from Heroic. I start the information out. Maybe Cloud9 will make a move or a rotation that is unwise. Oh, Axile, you lucky bugger. He nearly gets caught there. It's Tessus who makes the move on the other side of the map, however. Axile in for the information. Nate will take him. He dishes out a fair bit. We'll see here. This is not a bad look for Cloud9. Hortov goes down. Just try and buy a bit of time. It's ultimately ineffective, but... Heavy guard, good position for him. Could deny the bomb plant. He's not quite in position, though, is he, unfortunately, to try and spam through. Nerds, then. Keep your eyes here on the plat box. What's he going to be able to find? Clean for oh. two. Oh, yes. I knew it. I could see it in my mind's eye. They've gone a bit early. Heavy guard cannot help, cannot assist. Can he clean up, however? Slow creep in, knows the position of Nerds. Where is this second guy? Is the big old question. Nerds has now spotted him out. That's confirmed. That'll be the round, man. Just yeah, play it safe. Don't really give him the fight. That's a little close. Shouldn't be able to get this, though. He does have a kit available. He's planning for a main. And unfortunately, Heavy oh, God guesses the wrong way. He gets the kill. Shush with a mess, but it doesn't matter. They get the round. I mean, everyone's going to die. Shouldn't have been the case. That should have been the easiest of easy spray downs for Shush, and he could, could have kept his gun up. Now, Cloud9, they would be buying anyway, but they'll know Heroic's money is just going to be... Sure, they know they're going to have rifles, but it's not going to be perfect across the board in the slightest. Not a single soul surviving, and that just kind of tells the tale about what I was talking about with Shush's individual level. That's just like a every day spray down that you'd hit 99 times out of 100 but it seems like that 100 that one time that 100th moment catches him off guard and now heroic are down to galil in the following round i agree that heroic made some mistakes in that after plant as well to be fair certainly cloud nine i mean nerds give, being gifted those two kills from the plat box um they went before heavy god was ready and you were spot on about that but look at heroic in the following round Got some good timing on this one. I see had just moved away from the angle at CT. And he's let Heroic push forward. Go for the boost on the grass. And they're going to leap their way in, of course. But as I said, lack of utility. Lack of money. After that previous round means that I see will get gifted the first. But Tessas and Shush do well to recover. Axel has to trade. And it's a 3v3. Lovely stuff from Dexter. I might just get them... 
in for this round, to be honest with you. I see on that orb. Can't really help too much on the retake here. <sighs> the boys are going for it, though. They fancy themselves. Heavy God. Flash over the top is successful. Not ready for Nerds. Guys, we're going to have to start checking this box. Nerds, he quite likes it. I see. Yeah, just can't decide. There's steps all over. There's shots coming over his shoulder as well. He somehow manages to make the way there. I figured he'd surely get crunched. Ooh, he's still being chased. USP is out. <laughs> Tess is going to fall. He was going to go down to the bomb anyway, so trying to make something happen. So does Nerds. You fellas, what is going on? What is happening in this game? A little bit all over the place from both sides in that sense. And kind of indecisive, I guess. Nonetheless, it is heroic. Picking up two. This this will make Cloud9's mind up to buy here. I'm convinced of it. They, they can only probably get MP9s on a couple of the other players. Obviously, obviously IC can drop one. They're going to use attack because they know heroic. Rare occasion where a T side wins two rounds in a row with nobody left alive. Doesn't happen too often. That's why Cloud9 are taking some time to talk about this and how to uh, facilitate a force buy. Because Heavy God can get a uh, M4 himself. Um, I'd say Axel probably Famas MP9, Boomich Inters MP9 a piece or 5.7 a piece. They might decide to go for a half. Let's see. Heavy God did have that extra money to get that MP9 in play. So it's very interesting. I, on many occasions, I would I expect the CT side to force by here, knowing the damage done to Heroic, knowing they have no bank whatsoever. But Cloud9 deciding, okay, we'll just take our time, prioritize our own funds, and maybe play out this round with the MP9 and the AWP, where we still have a chance at doing some more damage. Time will tell, my good man. Uh, the B-bomb site looks pretty good, right? So, heroic. Oh, gotta be careful. Guessing the wrong way at the moment. Boomich gonna go wildly flying in. Icy gets one. They weren't banking on two. Could have been a nice little play, but indeed, Nertz backs his man. And it is just Heavy God with the MP9. Some money to be made, potentially, but the round itself is in dire jeopardy. Not looking likely at all, as Heavy God will indeed fall. So that's gonna be that secured. should be finally some comfort for Heroic. This should be around where they survive with four. Finally some bank. And of course, having a look at recent results for Cloud9 on Ancient as they try and recover what they can. The real pain for Cloud9 in the four games they've played with this roster. Which are uh, up against 3D Max, NIP, Johnny Speeds in that Dacha Belgrade qualifier I mentioned. Of course, 500 in the open qualifier for this event. They they do okay on CT, Cloud9 usually. But 42% on T side. They have only won a couple of pistols. That actually, I think, was only their second ever pistol round. They've won in those four best of threes. God damn. In this matchup. They only won one pistol before that. So... There are issues for Cloud9 on this map, despite the good start. And uh, Heroic, I would say they probably know how to punish those. But let's see. Let us see indeed. Back round with the bye. Cloud9 looking for presence. Early smoke, of course. Molotov down. Insta smoke is really getting a lot of airtime these days. Just gives that mid control. Not a lot of teams actually putting bodies into mid anymore. It's all about the rest of the map. Boomich. Smoke goes down. That gives his position away. Insta's getting contacted on here. Lovely find from him. Smoke was indeed going to put him out of action, but it comes a bit late. Axile falls to the AWP. Four versus four. Sight conceded. And maybe space here for Heroic to take that control. And yeah, Nerts will push forward. Inter's now knows he needs this kill, but he's not going to have the protection of that smoke anymore to push forward back in towards CT. And Nerts, that's the Nerts we know and love. Nine and four start in this map for him. 
Fast SO should easily catch Heavy God advancing up lane. He absolutely will. And they will know where Boomich was from earlier on. Here we go, Heroic. Something to work with here. You've got Nerts performing. And you've got Cloud9's economy in the bin. As we touched on, man, should be a game on our hands. Certainly the way that uh, it felt coming into this one. Heroic. A different team, for sure. Mirage still going to be tough for them if we do end up there. But this is a pretty keen turnaround compared to the first map. Compared to just the start of this one as well. It felt like Heroic were maybe uh, in the money. But once the guns have come into play, Heroic, the driving force. Half by four, Cloud9. What are they going to do with it? Everybody's sort of grouping up here. But a general split. They're going to flash to start the round off towards middle. The AWP getting boosted up here as Dexter looks to find this first frag. I think Cloud9 maybe with uh, the buy that they have. A few smokes in there, you know, just wind the clock down. Don't give them all oh, those early peaks. I see. Dangerous game. <laughs> Icy just puts one bullet through that smoke with the 5.7, and it's a headshot on Dengster through the corner of the wall with that 5.7. Dink down to 48. Annoying for Dengster. I would have wanted to stay on that boost for a little while longer. But this is a relic's chance to reach 5. He's going to get past that CZ and these 5.7 and Deagles. Interesting to see Boomich still wanted to go for that uh, CZ. I would say the 5.7 is 10 times better than a CZ, but sometimes. By his personal preference, but nothing this time. Test is made. So that spray transfer look very easy up against the pistols. Plant will come through safely. And I see Inter's on Axile. Just be trying to play some aggressive exits because they're buying next round anyway. They just want to try and nab a weapon from somewhere. And from the bank of Heroic that was in the doldrums after those two rounds they won with nobody left standing. They've built it up pretty well now over the last few rounds. It is true, my good man. It is very, very true. So, yeah, I think they're in a great spot. So much pressure on Cloud9 to start performing. And it is a hell of a lot easier said than done. On this map, I think it moves so fast, right? Like, the rounds can just be over in 30, 45 seconds off those early frags. A lot of teams do struggle with this Ancient, but it also seems quite popular at the moment where we've maybe had for a while quite a slow meta of your Infernos and your Overpasses. This map in particular seems to have sped things up a bit, plus does too. Plus maybe you could argue an Anubis, although that has slowed down for me in, in recent times. Mm. We still are potentially in one of the wackiest map pools because of that. You know, yeah. there are a few rounds missing where it's like, wow, what a read, or wow, what a what a move, what a timing, etc., etc. It's a lot more based on this guy clicked my head better, so I lost <laughs> the round, which can be nice sometimes, but you don't want that to be the entire series. You know, we got Dust Two, Ancient, super fast. We got Mirage somewhere in the middle, but God forbid there was a Vertigo in here or something. You know, it'd be really. I know. Really sad is all, you know, for my first BO3 of the day, of the week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Vertigo has uh, definitely fallen out of favour for many teams and players of, of casual and professional alike, just with that new hole in Elevator. Catwalk is good, I think, but, you know, I think people are they're, they're gagging for train to come back, aren't they? They want to train, they want to cash, perhaps, in the future. We'll see. I know FM Pone, of course, is working very hard uh, on that new cash, and we're seeing lots of screenshots come out from him. So... We'll have to see how that transpires into the future. We'll have to see how this hold transpires for Icy. Important gun round for Cloud9. I haven't got kit, so they're going to try and play on the front foot. But flash is going to be really good. Thankfully, Icy times his shot really well. Tess is holding for the possibility of a mid push through the flank quickly. Cloud9 have focused their attention around Donut for now. To stop giving Hurts that plat box position because they'll continue to do so much work from it, I feel like. And now, it's an issue, Squib, because no kit, like I said. Yeah, not going to be easy. Kixon's got the angle as well. Two for him. That's the round. See you later. <laughs> yeah, I, that's that's just so tough, though. That's just how it goes, mate. Like, you've got a guy holding an angle, and you can't beat him. 
Um, again, the retakes do look a bit shaky. They're just never really in. Nurt's looking so clean. They love this map. You can just feel it. Yeah. Kicks Overrun. with a great angle. Nurt's with a great angle. It's just perfect. Overrun the A-bomb site once again there, Heroic. And the thing is, for Cloud9, they'll be looking at that round and say, did, what did we actually do badly wrong? Like, we can't necessarily always put two or three players on A. A is the most retakeable bomb site in the entirety of Counter-Strike right now. Um, but, you know, Icy gets his blind kill. He falls away. He has to fall away. They retain the 5v4. Icy doesn't go crazy and peek again. No one else goes crazy and peeks again. But they fall back so quickly off of that opening pick and allow Heroic so much space that Kicksang can just get into CT and deal with the first point of contact a lot quicker than Cloud9 were expecting. And their donut rotation just got balked by utility. Completely snookered uh, Cloud9 right now. They need some individual prowess. And Boomer is going to try and put that into practice with that MP9. It's a one for one at least. Ooh, tough for Nerds. We'll go down trying to get aggressive. Flash comes in. It's effective on 2 1. But yeah, they're not ready for Inter's. Got to get this trade though. Tessas. Nade softens Axel oh. up, but the smoke hides him <laughs> completely. Oh my. Houdini Axile does manage to get that frag somehow. I thought surely he would go down. Would have been a 2v2 right now, but as it is, 1v3. And Dexter, he does not like his chances. Not too many options available for him. He's just going to have to maybe try and go. They've got money, right? I don't think saving here would be uh, a good choice. Just a bit overkill, but. There are some players in the world that might do so. However, it's going quite well for him here. It is going quite well for him. They've backed off. They're unsure. Starve of information. It always works. Cloud9 a little panicked. They absolutely need this one. Dexter has an opportunity. There is a world here. He's got a smoke. Come right click down to the site. Got a flash to help as well. And obviously, a right click smoke in that position can facilitate a plant, but Heavy God might just put a few bullets through it. That's the main problem, and it's not just a few bullets. He puts the entire clip through it, and Degster will drop. Important one for Cloud9, but they're going to have to recover the end of this first half the hard way and break through this heroic money. I think um, it was kind of wild, as you say, in mid. Axar managing to get away with one more. It's actually the nade from heroic that almost killed Axile, which in the end killed Heroic, because that nade smoke, as you pointed out, completely covered Axile, an amusing moment that had a little bit of fortune to maybe work the way back into this half, and Axile in mid, all the flashes are super good! Nurse is just stuck behind back, back box, can't see a thing, and Axile deals with it all with the help of Boomich. Shush left alone then. Completely. Cloud9 have turned an absolute corner here, it would feel, towards the tail end of the half. Really impressive. What more is there to do here? Shush just for Axel, waiting. Right? Yeah, I mean, uh, for sure. Get frags on the board again. Seems like that role change is working great for him. Yeah, man. I'll continue... You know, bringing the hype and, and singing the praises of the guy. We really do want this team to work. I think some fantastic players, some legendary players within this team. And then uh, also a nice combination of, of new blood as well. So there's uh, a lot of excitement surrounding Cloud9. It's just a case of whether they can translate it into those bigger games. You know what I mean? They really did get rolled by pain. Um very true. In, in the showdown, so when it comes to some slightly higher stakes, some slightly more consistent competition, we've not been looking as good. Umich to find the frag. Ditches the orb, takes the AK. Looking to even things up here at the tail end of the half. Yeah, I can't, uh, you know, can't take the results of uh, away of teams like Payne, uh, with you know how incredible Big Zero makes that team look on a regular basis, and of course OG against Heroic. Um, OG once again try finding their way to somehow look good in a blast event. It seems like they always pop up somehow, don't they? Um, of course with Krizen from Mouse NXT. OG of course are in this qualifier as well. 
Alongside Buzz, of course, currently on trial. And it seems like Krizen has already revamped that OG roster somewhat. Giving them some quick success. He was destined for a a little bit of a promotion, I think, Krizen, for sure. Good to see that OG have something working for them, at least. Because they've been kind of specialists in mid for a long time. But uh, we'll have to see. And in this one, Cloud9 have a little bit of a rebuttal toward the end of the half. Axel once again getting a nice two-piece toward the bottom of mid there. Getting himself in the action, in the midst of the madness. And uh, the question remains, is it going to be an even half or a 7-5 as Heroic look to set up some mid-flashes? First their way out, try and overwhelm here. No one on the other side of it at the moment and maybe waiting on another flash to come in. It will force that donut player back. So, we've got the control. Ooh, and Axile with a dry old swing. Felt like maybe he had to fight his way out there. Maybe catch one with nades in hand. Not going to happen. Thankfully, Boomich with an aggressive ramp play. He's managed to find himself a kill. I see ready and waiting here. Thinking about a boost, maybe. Molotov will not spread. Really thinks there's going to be a boost. Shadow spotted for instance. Another one for him on the cards. He will take it. The orb shot nice. just straight past his ear. Really damn close, but he manages to survive it out. And Cloud9 looking set to get another. Oh, nerds. That's a unlikely duel to win now. But up against that sort of angle from Boomich. But 19 HP. Kicks and alongside him. They need a, a headshot from somewhere with 40 seconds. And the positioning of Cloud9, you'd think, is just way too good. With the bomb in their possession. And there we go. It's going to be all down to Kixan. And Icy is holding the right angle. Even Stevens at half. See you in a minute.
Welcome back in, everybody. We are just on a little bit of a tech here, maybe. Uh, but the game, indeed, getting going pretty quickly. So, yeah, just taking a second to get back in, I suppose. Making sure they're all ready to go, but no waiting at all. Either way, even Stevens here. So this is an interesting one. I think it is safe to say Trav, because Heroic, they really looked like they were going to run away with things after losing out on the pistol. But Cloud9 managed to dig a bit deep, and they found some really decisive rounds as well. So they are capable, but as you've mentioned for us, CT side is what they're about. T side is where they tend to struggle. So have they given themselves enough room is the big question. Let's see. As you rightly point out, it's going to be tough, I think. The one thing that I am slightly concerned about, of course, is Heroic do need Shush and Dexter. T side they had kind of nuts doing a lot of it, so Dexter and Shush don't deliver on CT, then Cloud9 have a path back in. Utility will be raining in, and so will the frag. Sixan just clicks that smoke and gets himself two kills in the end from doing exactly that. And I see he's seeing ghosts right now. There's so many players around him, and he just can't isolate a singular doll. It must be so frustrating for him. Can he finally get a kill or is he just going to continue to get tapped in the side? I think that is going to be the latter. He gets two in the end. Fair play to him. The heavy god's caught in the open and his shush will pounce. As soon as kicks and gets two through the corner of that smoke, you kind of feel, yeah, that's not working for C9. Yeah, very, very tough. I think it is, again, another sort of safe to say moment that they absolutely needed to get that pistol on the board really hard for them to now try and recover things especially without a bomb plant i would say so yeah they are up against the wall really got to perform quickly once that first rifle round rolls around meanwhile in the same vein we have a few heroic players kind of being a bit cheeky here dexter out on the jewelies there is an mp9 in play as well despite what looks to be an early rifle buy so there is space for Cloud9 to beat the bonus, and I think that would be a really big deal for them if they can keep this neck and neck. Tesla is just checking mid, letting Nerts know what's coming. How many does he get? It's actually only one. Axon with the Glock gets one, Inters with the Glock gets one. Shush needs to make sure he doesn't go down here. It's very unlikely that they are going to double face. And thankfully for Shush, they double face at a nice timing for him. So he can just spray both of them down. No worries in the end. Using Getting two kills for Cloud9, I would say, is probably the ultimate success. And around with that sort of investment. Now the AKs can come out. Six to eight. We know they struggle on T-Side on this map. In the four maps we've seen from them on this ancient they have uh, not looked too hot. Of course, I think it deserves to be spoken about the Decider. That is a map of Mirage, of course, where they have been looking very good. So, what goes around comes around. We'll have to see if Heroic can finish this one off. But Cloud9's first investment has enough utility to facilitate some form of strategy. Enters with the A main control. Just grabbing it at the moment, not really doing anything with it. More of a mid moment. Yeah, that's what Axel was waiting for. Trying to draw attention his way. He's eating a lot to do so. He will eventually smoke off the red room. What are they going to do with it, though? Of course, it's late and slow and really hard for mid control for Cloud9. But like I say, it has to result in something. Appreciate the patience from both teams on this round. They know the first gun round is so important and heroic, of course. The bonus investment. Oh, it's awkward. But Axile, when you see an enemy, you have to shoot no matter who's in the way. Takes Heavy God down with him. And of course, Axile 2 HP from all that. So it probably is even more painful. He has not really got a part to play in this round now, you kind of feel like. But Heroic and now got no utility left themselves whatsoever. This one flash and one more drop of Icy could still cause problems. But he's creeping through and he will catch Kixan. Nurts gets one and he gets two. That's huge. And Inters can't complete the kill on the flanking Dexter. It's taken him so long to take that one and Dexter then reacts to take it back. It's Boomich in a one versus one after he gets a second for himself. 
And now, where does he reposition? Dex has gone to the rifle to make this clutch look a little bit easier for him. Knowing that Boomich is at least half HP, if not lower. Boomich has won many clutches I've seen on this new ed edition of Cloud9. Dexter, first tap. And Boomich is going to choose to reface right now. Dexter's is looking at the right position. But Boomich makes it happen. Triple kill clutch to get Cloud9 the opening gun round. There he is, the boss man once again taking over the round. And that is big. That is really, really big. An absolute mess. I don't know what has happened in that sort of particular 3v2, 2v2 type situation as well. Fights going on all over the shop. A lot of split players, a lot of 1v1s. Kind of crazy. Kind of crazy, man. But back with a vengeance on the Cloud9 side. And as I say, a huge moment for them to take. And the ramifications of that certainly felt as Heroic will have to call a timeout and they partially call it to talk over the money because it is all over the place what are we doing are we buying are we ecoing and it does indeed seem that they are going to buy but I would imagine there is some chatter over what to do how to stem this tide that is on the way Cloud9 about to indeed roll them over if this wave gets any bigger can confirm that Eternal Fire have beaten Bait. That will drop Bait into the lower bracket of this tournament. And take Eternal Fire to the next round of the upper bracket, which of course, Cloud9 or Heroic. That is also hella fast. That yep. is so fast. Really quick series coming out there. Really quick moves in towards mid here, though, it would what? seem. Axile has managed to slip the net. Splits the difference, gets in between two. He's not quite noticed that he's in between two, but all the same, looking good. <laughs> Great hold. Tessus just really banking on the fact that there's potentially nobody out at shelf. Bomb going to go down. It's Bomb has been a disastrous and heroic here, safe to say. Both those two kills kind of just came in the side and in the back, right? They've never got a chance to see their, uh, their demise firsthand. Inters gives Heroic a little bit of taste of their own medicine from how much work, work Nerts did from that particular angle. And sure, she's off to save. Axel just making an individual play in mid with the help of some utility. The, all the noise of the smokes blooming, the nades flying in, the you know, flashes popping. And the Heroic just had no idea he'd, as you rightly said, slip the net. And that just made everything fall apart for Heroic. Caused Tessas to have to back up through the Jaguar smoke, it looks very silly the way he dies, to be fair, against Heavy God. But he had to make a move at some point, just made his move maybe at the wrong time. And Cloud9 are going to be rewarded with a low investment round from their opponents themselves. And a chance to retake the lead once again. And yeah, if, it, if we do get Cloud9 versus Eternal Fire in that next round, which is currently looking the most likely, even though we know Cloud9 aren't the best on T side on this map. I think that will be a, uh, a barn burner. Can't wait for that. Yeah, man. It's, it's a pretty stacked qualifier, I have to be honest. And uh, I am all here for it, you know. This is surely what's coming into next year, that the qualifiers are going to look just like this. Few invited teams to each tournament, but... An awful lot, and it will change. It will fluctuate. In terms of who's getting the invites, who's getting the qualifications. Nades over. Ooh, okay. Okay. That's number three. Nades, I think. nades not over. Uh, yeah, that's a little whoopsie. No, no jump in there, my guy. No jump in there. I don't think that one would be a jump throw. So that's just uh, bad positioning, potentially. USB's trying to overwhelm. Shush brings up the rear with the M4 here. Good for one. Maybe another one on the cards as well. It is definitely possible if he keeps this rolling because there's some really low HP players, but he's also low. So he doesn't have that confidence to go swinging. They're even faking him out because they are that nervy about their HP bars. Yeah. Got to take everything with caution. A little extra little bit of uh, pinch of salt, perhaps, just to make sure you complete these successfully and with enough players alive. Do you want to know where that phrase comes from? I learned from an Instagram reel. See, they pinch say these reels, man. They say they're bad. Yeah, pinch of salt. Do you know where it's from? Okay, so essentially back in the days, you know, like uh, 1800s or whatever, there was a bit of a snake oil merchant who was like, um, here's a remedy for 
uh, it's like a poison or something. Might even have been, you know, a venomous animal type thing. And what it was is he would give you the thing, and then all you had to do, the only instruction for it was to add a pinch of salt. Okay. And then it turns out it didn't work at all, right? It was just BS, for want of a better phrase. It was just <laughs> like he just put a bunch of random stuff together, completely made up. And then, of course, you know, pinch of salt is take it with some caution. So, yeah, just be cynical, I suppose, is maybe what the phrase pinch of salt means. And that's kind of where it comes from, is because it was the only instruction on this vial that the man gave me. And, uh, yeah. Incredible it might even have been for something like, you know, the plague or smallpox <laughs> or some major yeah. disease, malaria, you know, whatever. And it just didn't work. So I well, think everyone was buying it at one point. Well, you learn something new every day. Um, mm. I do appreciate that. Unfortunately, for Cloud9, they're learning that this round is going to be quite difficult. They've already lost a pick in mid. You saw that Axel only got one back towards the first Tessa keeps looking. Oh, I was going to say. Tessa keeps looking. There's a chance that Heavy God could get a recovery kill to bring it back into an even standpoint. Is it one of those sort of pushes from a CT side where you're like, uh, is it necessary? You're a man up 4v3 and you're pushing down to a B lane. Seems like it's something that doesn't need to be done necessarily, but... Tess says wins it out this time. And unfortunately for C9, I see an Inters are quite split up here. They can team up together. We've still got 45 seconds to sort out this round. You've got Dexter in toward Donut. And Shush behind the box on site. And right now, I think it's fair to say that Haraika have positioned themselves absolutely perfectly just to try and at least guarantee a one-for-one -one on the last two players if they go pushing in. Which is looking less and less likely, it's fair to say. Icy is now finally coming up to join Inters. It's going to be down to whether Icy can win a duel straight up. But Heroic is just not giving them anything. And now he's watching the flank in the 15 seconds. That answers my question. It will be a save. And Heroic are going to even us up once again. This game has got legs. It does indeed, sir. There it is, ticks over, Heroic get their round, and Cloud9 do get their save, which actually will have a massive effect into this next round. Even with the loss bonus, those two players potentially would have struggled to buy, uh, Icy especially, so really big deal. Keep that AWP, right, and it allows Cloud9 to fight back here in round number 19, and this is going to be your most important round of the series thus far, particularly if your name is Heroic. They have to get this one on the board. They cannot allow Cloud9 to get the immediate reset. Yeah. Correct. Needs some success. Uh, Needs some poor results. I don't know if you try and keep them on that stretch of form, but the battle back from Heroic has been pretty good. Heroic need to give their social media managers some content, because right now there's none. So far, it's looking like something to work with here, because Nurse has got the first, and he's performing admirably on this map of Ancient. Boomich is forced forward by the utility, but it's going to get spammed down straight through it, and he might take Boomich as well. He absolutely does. Tessas helps out for that one. And Cloud9 play dangerous games behind that utility to try and get a pick back from a 4v5, and it's not going to work out for them. Just may find one more, and Tessas isn't expecting Heavy got in toward Jaguar. That's a mistake, and that means the bomb might be able to be retrieved now with that Molotov in toward the entrance of Cave. So, 2v3. Heroic, be careful, boys. Yeah, they do have to be careful. Heavy God. Smoke down. Try and allow a bit of a cross in. Draw some attention, maybe. 30 seconds. Definitely is doable. Big ol' flash to allow Heavy God in. Bomb plant going to come through. No chance to stop that. You just have to be a bit careful. And now a play has to be made, right? Inside the smoke goes one. Heavy God holding, guarding his man. This could be a nice setup. If Heavy God can find one and they attempt to trade him, or this could be really clean, or maybe, you know, Heavy God could just find them all. That works too. Dexter down to the one versus two. Absolutely massive moment here. A little nervy though. The no-scope. Maybe uh, meant to kind of scope in a little bit there, I would imagine. I don't know what he's no-scoping at. Either way, he is out. And Cloud9 <sighs> get 10 against the odds from the jaws of defeat. They are maybe going to snatch the victory here, Trav. 
Ah, I think, yeah, there's so many little micro mistakes from Heroic in that round that you can talk about that has contributed to Cloud9 finding a way back. That's one that Heroic will watch back in the demo and be disgusted with. Wanting to push forward into Jaguar to keep control of the bomb. Gifting Heavy God one more kill back in return. And then, to be fair to Cloud9, they play it really well. They do it to the best of their ability with that setup, like you say, with Inters close in the smoke. Heavy God playing from range. Two headshots from Heavy God. Inters didn't even need to help in the end. And Cloud9 find an unlikely 10th. If they're to compound it now with an 11th, Heroic would have no money to prevent Cloud9 reaching match point. Huge one to take for C9. Even the retake from Heroic was a little bit poorly managed as well. The fact they kind of just went a little bit one by one toward the right. Playing behind that smoke. Heavy God had to hit the sh shots, sure. But didn't really go together. Flashes over the top. Quick burst comes around. Cloud9. What else? The base change. Shoot, going to be Molotov out of position. Finished immediately. Oh. Down goes another. And their hopes of this map might just be slipping away. Heroic were so comfortable, so confident. Even even us, we were confident in them too. Maybe that overbearing emotion might just be their downfall. It is the safe. It is your only option, guys. But it sucks. 11 now for Cloud9. It is not quite over just yet. But it is beginning to be. Yeah. Heroic just have to save, otherwise, they, as I said, they would have nothing to prevent Cloud9 from reaching match point. Great call from Cloud9, I've got to say. We know the A bomb site is you know, very often a site you can go toward and get yourself some control quite easily. Heavy God gets his opportunity to get his way into it and gets himself two entries. Just going straight up against the donut player as well, taking matters into his own hands. Heavy God has been heavy goat in the last two rounds, especially. And Heroic are caught surprised and shocked by this turnaround in the most important stage of the match for them. Trying to take it to a third. If we do get to a third from here, they'll be delighted from this position. No Cloud9 are very good on Mirage, but C9 could just get this one done in two here. On a map where they have not had good results. Not been one of the ones they've loved to go toward with this new iteration of their roster. But current heroic, current, well, they are struggling, to put it lightly, in recent times. They need to find a way to make this save happen for a successful round to get themselves up to double digits and keep this game close. Otherwise, Cloud9 have a date with Eternal Fire just a few rounds away. Alright, let's see. Kicks in on the aggressive move. Oh, his teammate goes down. He has to find this now. And I think they know what's up. I think they recognize the look that this guy is not just solo swinging. Why the hell would he do that? There's got to be some support. Really well read from Cloud9 to not just go flying in after that first kill. It was all a trap. Yeah. And they pull back. So trap not sprung. And it's now man advantage, C9. Some really smart moves from Cloud9 on this T side. Uh, as we said, maybe they've put a lot of work into this to improve their T side because that's where they've really struggled lately. And yeah, I think this has been a big, big improvement. Sure, you could say it's only heroic at this point, even, but it's a good gauge to see where they're at. And once again, the A bomb site is coming under siege. Inter's pushing forward, look good in this map. Should find an entry, absolutely will. Boomich helps out towards Gixan. Dexter has had zero impact in this map whatsoever. Nothing to do for him. And once again, he's locked out of even going for this. He was miles away alongside Tessez. Cloud9 looking just a lot, lot better over the series. And the, those two rounds from Heavy God has completely turned the momentum. Yeah, absolutely, man. It's wild. It is wild. I mean, it's maybe why they picked him up as well. You can immediately sort of feel from a player like Heavy God and um, having met the guy, he's definitely like this as well. A very brave kind of player, very yeah. confident. You know, there's a couple of rounds in here on this map in particular. They're already a map up, right, where it feels like, okay, 
this is where a lot of teams will just say, but Heavy Gods may be involved in that situation, in that clutch attempt, and they go for it. And sometimes they pulled off damage, sometimes not. And on the T side, you've seen the impact that he can have, where you can dictate the fights a bit more, where you're the one planting the bomb, right? It's difficult on the retakes, but on that T side, I think it can have an effect. So we're seeing the impact of Heavy God here for this Cloud9 team. And I think he could format, if he can get the mechanics alongside where his confidence is at, he could format into one of the great T-side rifles. Yeah, I mean, he showed that on OG, didn't he? Without a shadow of a doubt. Boom is trying to just end the game here and now. That's a bit aggressive, going through utility up against Kixan. We'll get taken down. It's only three in a row needed for Heroic. These MR12 games can have comebacks come at you thick and fast. But yeah, I think uh, Cloud9 needed a player like Heavy God, willing to take initiative, willing to be assertive nearly all the time, knowing when to be as well and when not to be still. And especially when you've got players like Inters and like IC, who'd be maybe a bit more turret-like as, as a rifler, sort of defensive rifler, support rifler and AWPA. Axel's return to form, of course, in the roles that were somewhat taken up by Electronic. He's freed up again, and his numbers are freed up again. So it's good signs. There are good signs here. And Cloud9 getting through to the RMR itself. It's going to be a long road to get to the Major itself. But getting through 3-0 in the madness that is Tier 2 Counter-Strike and stacked close qualifiers... Is a really good sign. Close wins over Passion UA, of course. Pa big fan of Passion UA, but only just scraped by them. And they scraped by Nine Pandas as well to make the RMR. Really good signs to win those close maps. 13-11, both of those. They'd get destroyed on map 2, 13-1. But forgive them if they can grind out series. Axel, he might go past Incendio. You know how bad Incendio is going to be. He's got so much space to work with. And the round could spot. Viral Tessa's behind the corner. Nine seconds. They're going to have to go. Heavy God hits the entry. And Axel can commit to the plant. Oh my. It's still a mess though of bullets. Big one from Icy. Big one. Needed to win that fight. That might just lock it in, to be honest with you. Dexter is incredibly low. Shush is really going to have to do the heavy lifting here. And there is, unfortunately, a lack of information. Kit available. Creep forwards. Hero needed. Two of them stacked on top of each other. What an angle from Inters. Not going to be expected ever. And Cloud9 have indeed done it. The unlikely map of Ancient is snatched away. So a really, really keen showing from them to get the 2-0 Trav. Maybe expecting them to take it overall, in my opinion. But yeah, felt like it should have been a 2-1. Not the case here. Heroic. It's tough. There's some really, really messy rounds in there.